I'm Michelle, and it is time for Talk To Me Tuesday on July 5th, 2022. I haven't gotten a whole lot of sewing done this week, but I do have been working on rod pockets because of my Quilt Guild's uh, quilt show coming up. I am going to be a vendor at uh, Berrien Town and Country Quilters Quilt Show on July 14th, 15th, and 16th in St. Joseph, Michigan at the Box Factory. And I am also going to be a vendor at the Calco Quilters Quilt Show in Marshall, Michigan on July 8th and 9th. And so I've been prepping for those. I have, uh, yeah, been cutting fa fabric. I have more fabric to cut. But on the 14th, 15th, and 16th, my, besides being a vendor at my Quilt Guild's Quilt Show, I'm also putting several of my quilts in the quilt show and have been putting on rod pockets. And I thought, well, as part of my video here, I would just go ahead and show how to make a D pocket for hanging quilts in case uh, you haven't seen how that is done. And so... I will take my quilt and measure the width of it and cut my broad pocket an inch short of whatever the width of my quilt is. Then I will turn down about three eighths of an inch and fold that over again and press. Then, well, before I do that, I do cut this nine and a half inches wide. Um, then I fold it over three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. I stitch that about a quarter inch to make a nice little hem. Then fold it in half like so and press all the way down. After I've done that, I open it back up and then I fold the edges in so that they meet at that folded center line and press going down each side. After I've done that, I usually come back, top stitch this down a quarter inch, fold it so that the wrong sides are together and stitch a quarter inch all the way down. And that will look like this. After I have stitched, I will open this up, finding my pressed edges. And if you can see, if you pull it tight, their bottom is flat and the top has a little bit of room. From there, I will find the center of my broad pocket. This one's a fairly long one. And I might have to go to, and I find it on that pressed edge, just like so. Then I will find the center of the back of my quilt and line those up and pin it. Now when I pin it, I pin on this side to begin with. And I will just go, just stick it right down like so. After I've gotten it all lined up a half an inch below the top edge of my quilt, I come back and fold it over and then repin so that I can then with my blind hem stitch on my machine stitch right along here in the blind hem stitch mine is three state straight stitches and one zigzag stitch and when it's done it looks like so then i will lay out my quilt and find the bottom pressed edge and push that extra it ends up being about a half an inch up and when I've done that, then I pin here, fold this back, 
and take my pin and pin on the other side. If I can get this to go in like so. Okay, then with my blind hem stitch, which is number nine on my Bernina, I, and I use foot five, which is the um, hemming foot, go ahead and stitch making sure that it catches as I go and that's what the nice little um, edge right here that folds over on my foot now I usually when I do a rod pocket like this I find the thread that matches the majority of the front of my quilt just in case a stitch goes through. Most of the time I try and hit just the backing fabric and or the bind, or the batting, but sometimes I go all the way through. Now, when you are done, I just hit my head on my left, and hang it up, it should hang nice and flat and you won't even notice the bulge of the hanging rod. And you can see the back of this one. I did red and coming along here on the front because it's majority of it's red. If I did go through, you really wouldn't see it. Um, and so that is how I make a D-shaped rod pocket. Until next time, let's go sew.